Here we go. I'm Dave Johnson. I'm Glenn Cosmo. Welcome to another edition of Full Court Press on the Washington Wizards Podcast Network. And we welcome Wizards General Manager Tommy Shepard. And first things first, it is, I think right now for all of us, it is so good to connect with everybody that's a part of our Wizards family. That includes fans, supporters, players, and, and so good to connect with you. And I think everybody just wants to know, how are you doing during this period of time? Man, I'm doing fantastic. It is great to see you guys. It's great to catch up. I think we were supposed to be on our on the. We just played Toronto last night, supposedly, and then we're on our way to the, to another game. But uh, we're doing fantastic. Thank you. All's calm. I mean, talk a little bit about um, you know. First of all, I, I, before we get into anything uh, Wizards related, how are you doing? How are you coping? How's your family? How's your health? Uh, g- give me a give me a quick catch up. Everybody's fantastic. Thank you. We have four of our seven kids at home. Uh, We practice social distancing about every five hours or so. Everybody has to get away from each other, but it's been fantastic. It's actually time well spent together. Uh, We're just making the best out of a tough situation and hoping for the world to to be healthy again. And whenever the new normal emerges, we'll be ready for it, but we're going to use this time to, to really be together. Usually you think about it, March and April, especially I'm on the road. I'm never home. And so this is one of my kids, their birthday is actually tomorrow. This will be the first birthday I was actually there on the day in five years. And that's just a horrible thing. So we're excited about that to, to be together on that date. But everybody's great. Thank you for asking. I hope the same for your families. We're doing well and, and hanging in. And that brings up something we'll, we'll get into right now. You know, eventually there's going to be an NBA draft. Um, and I know you can't talk about specific players, but as you just described, just talk about what you anticipate from that process and, and how different that process has already been because as you just outlined, you would have spent March and April on the road. You know, the fortunate thing for us, and I think most NBA teams, all the work has been done to this point. We're not trying to go find a player for the first time. We have reports on over 500 players that played NCAA games this year. We have our top 70 that we're looking at. We're burning up as much video as we can, utilizing all the resources we can find. And there's, there's archives of interviews with players because we're not going to be able to maybe possibly interview players this year. So we're trying to rely on the archives and build a personality profile for each player. We've had scouting calls just about every day with our college scouts. We're going over every player in our top 70, breaking them down groups of five. Uh, that's been very exciting, very, very, very uh, collaborative effort. And I think Frank, Frank Ross, Johnny Rogers, all, our staff have done a great job conducting those. And, and, and we're also having pro personnel uh, meetings where we're, we're getting ready for free agency right behind it. So whenever those dates arrive, we're moving forward. Right now, the NBA hasn't changed any deadlines. So we're, we're preparing it like the drafts in two months. We'll find out. I think every day you just have to know that there might be some changes in our world and you need to be flexible. I mean, as we're, we're all sitting in a – in a time where we, there is a lot of time for self-reflection. Um, talk a little bit about how you used, you have used that time for self-reflection and a little bit about you, you self-reflecting personally and about the season that just passed. The first thing I recognize is, is I've been home for 25 straight nights for dinner, which is a new world record. I think the last record was six. So one thing I found out right away, I don't spend enough time appreciating the time with my family. I've tried to, to, to finish quite a few books that I had started, and I'm reading several different things at once. Now I'm trying to consolidate and get as many books in as I can. Taking some online classes at Yale, which has been fun. Uh, and I think just trying to sharpen up the edges where, you know, maybe you don't have the chance. We don't have enough time for self-improvement. I'm doing that. My wife and I work out together every morning, uh, which has been wonderful and and just trying to reconnect with, with as many people as I can as we're, we're, we're taking away the opportunity from seeing each other on the regular basis. I just try to reach out to people uh, five random calls a day besides my business stuff. And it's been fun to reconnect with people that way. So trying to just make it count as much as possible because we, we need to use this time because we have no other choice, but use it for positives and not for worry and not for, not for things that we can't control, control the controllables. Well, you talk about controlling the controllables and, uh, one of them is the culture you can create with with a team, and and you just made a point when you were talking about um, you can't in person interview potential draft picks, but obviously there's, there's video interviews and and 
um, other information. And as Glenn mentioned, just as you reflect back on this season, and as we've talked to a lot of players, um, describe the culture you hoped would be created with the Washington Wizards and, and your impression of what has been created. Because what we're sensing from the players, uh, it's a fun culture for them to be a part of. Well, we're really proud of it. I think it all starts with high character. And we like to be data-driven to help us make decisions on when there's two very similar players. We, we let the data kind of point us the direction we, we, we need to go. But it all starts with high character. And for us, it all starts with Bradley Beal and, and the job that he's done leading this team. And obviously, we added 10 players before the season, and then an additional four players have shuffled through towards the end of our bench. And uh, it's a completely different roster than what we ended the season with last year. And I, I like to think that what we've done is is have a, a community of accountability, a community where everybody's vulnerable, allowing themselves to, to, to make mistakes and get better, to ask for help, and to rely on each other to be a great team, uh, great teammates. And, and I think that's what we've done. I, I can't say enough about the job Scotty Brooks and his staff did to take on this job this year with this team with a bunch of young players, a bunch of unproven players, and, and to take them and, and try to maximize their development. I think we got a little hamstrung with some injuries that we could probably have a better record, but I never want to judge the season on the wins and losses as much as the development. And that's kind of probably the most frustrating thing just purely from a basketball standpoint is we kind of get an incomplete if we're not able to finish these games. And if whenever we do play again, I believe we will, uh, th that opportunity might get a little stunted just because of the, the gap in between. So with no excuses, what we're able to look at after – uh, the games that we have played, I think it's a positive picture for the future. Very excited about the young guys, very excited about the direction we're going. I mean, one thing I know about you is, is, is how competitive you are. <laughs> you know, you're, you're not going to sit back and, um, and uh, you know, in the way of rebuilding. This is not, you know, quote, unquote, a rebuilding situation. Oh. Look around the Eastern Conference, um, and, and around the NBA, and you got, you know, a lot of teams that uh, have their two or three elite players, the superstars, um, you know, and I think about what, you, what you're what you doing and, and how you've made some changes. Um, and you, you think about Wall, you think about Beal, you know, why wouldn't a, a free agent look at – the Washington, this Washington organization as, hey, you know what? This is a place where I want to play. Oh, absolutely. I think we're, we're a very desirable location. We have all the, the hardest things in the NBA, if you want to be a competitive franchise, is always going to start with location and ownership. We check those boxes big time. We have one of the best cities in America, one of the best owners in all professional sports. So we have those set. And then we have a great facility with great staff, great resources. Now it's just time to let's matriculate. Let's get some consistency, some continuity. Uh, and, and when you get that, I think guys come together and the best teams are when the players hold each other accountable. I think that's one of the things. And I, I wish I should have rolled some video for you guys before, but we're doing group workouts. Blair O'Donovan, Jeff Bangs, all development staff led by Danny Medina done an unbelievable job of we offer something for our players just about every day. And we do it on Zoom so everybody sees each other's faces and we leave the camera open so they can all sit around and chop it up. And as you know, like to bust each other's faces up a little bit afterwards, but it's been wonderful. We had a group yoga session today with 10 Wizards players and a bunch of Mystics players were on there. So we're keeping our community connected that way. Um, and I think, Glenn, for the future, what we'll do now, you'll be able to see so much more in the future, the bright, the brightness that we see and the work that the young guys are doing right now, we'll see in the future. But I'm telling you, the, the, the worst, worst thing for me about this lockout or this, this time away from basketball was the, the trajectory John Wall was on. He was looking fantastic. And he needed to play in the scrimmages he was doing. Those aren't available right now. So he's going to have to kind of take a step back and start over. But you guys are going to be really excited when you see what John, where John's at when we get back to, to playing next season. But again, that's the key. And just to emphasize that, you're talking about John Wall. We're, we don't know when this season resumes, but it's next season for John Wall, regardless of, of what kind of delayed time frame we're on. That's correct. That, we've always maintained that. I think it's fun for fans and, you know, basketball people. We, we all would love to see John play again this season, but it doesn't make sense in the big picture 
the big investment that we have in him and the, quite honestly, the care we have for his health to be a hundred percent for John Wall. You know, we've seen that guy play with broken hands and bone spurs and something wrong with his knee and he always plays. So he has a very high threshold of pain. So we need to determine when he comes back as much as him, because we know he'll try to play at 60% or 70% because he's a very tough guy. But the big picture for John Having him back in the backcourt next year solves a lot of issues that we wouldn't have been able to solve through the draft. There's nothing like being able to get a, a five-time all-star back on your roster. And then you talked about free agency, Glenn. Certainly we want all the free agents out in the NBA to take a look at us, but more important is, is the ones that we have here. We want to, you know, obviously, Davies Pertans is somebody that we're, we're very, very focused on as a, as a future player for the Wizards. He's been a fantastic fit. And then we're looking at, I think Shabazz Napier was a fantastic addition. Uh, so we, we got our own free agents first and let's start at home and we'll look out for need. If we, if the draft ends up being before free agency, free agency before the draft, we can't predict that or control that, but we'll be able to balance our roster, I think, through the draft, through free agency, whatever the holes are. But we want to certainly try to fill those holes from within first. We have a lot of young guys that need minutes and, uh, you know, we'll, we'll see where they're at. You know, Tommy, you, you know this. I was an NBA scout for seven years, and um, you mentioned Bertans, and I, you know, I was stunned with not the way he shoots the ball and his range and how elite he is from three, but as a basketball player. I, you know, I didn't, you know, being, being with this organization, you know, we, we've only seen him play a couple times a year, you know, twice. Um, but, you know, Davis Bertans, to me, shocked me because he can pass, he can defend, he rebounds, um, you know, he, he passes it real well. I mean, he, he, to some degree, is a complete player. And maybe some of the other things that he does is overlooked because he's such a great three-point shooter. I wanted to get your assessment of him. Uh, we, we think of him as being a capable player at both, both ends of the floor. And most important to us, he's a great teammate, a great person on top of that. So what he does for us, what we do for him is a perfect fit. You know, he didn't, we didn't unlock his game, but he certainly came in here and was given opportunities that weren't maybe there for him earlier in his career. And, and he came here and made the most of it. And like I said, it's just one of those things where what a fantastic opportunity for us to have him on our roster and vice versa. He loves it here. His family loves it here. And, and we just look forward to that day, whenever that is, uh, we're, we're the unique, team in the NBA that doesn't have just one. We have two Latvians, and Andres Pachesniks has been a fantastic uh, development project for us as well. So, you know, if there's any other Latvians in the draft, they'll sure, certainly get consideration for it. We have our quota right now. Yeah, I love the way AP's name just flowed off your lips. You, you did that so well. It yeah. took me three weeks to get it right on the radio. <laughs> so, Learn quickly. Yeah. Uh, speaking of which, and there's, there's an example right there. You know, people ask, all of us about this season and as you interact with fans I know you would have wanted to and you wanted to and I wanted to see more wins but this the season was so much fun because to me it was a, a season of discovery every night you didn't know what you would discover I want to get your take on uh, you knew a lot of these players as you you traded for them there was players that we we got on this team that you're interested in back in the 2018 draft can you just give us some of your wow moments as you discovered even more about these players when they suited up for the Wizards and started performing? Well, I think you guys, what witnessed, you know, is pretty exciting. Our, our expectations for Rui were, were very, uh, I would say, very modest when we drafted him. We hoped that he would develop into a pretty good role player, and he was able to, to earn the start from the beginning of the year, and, and he surpassed most of our expectations of him. We knew he could shoot the ball. Uh, but he, he also rebounds at a high clip. He's, I think, fifth in the NBA amongst rookie classes at rebounding. And he's a very intelligent player. So we're, we start this conversation, Glenn, with him. He, he's been fantastic. And, and Dave, I think the, the ability for him to just continue to grow and play multiple positions was huge for us. Then you kind of start to look and you said we brought in Bogner and we brought in Bonga uh, from the Lakers in that trade. And, and those guys kind of, they, they had an opportunity and they took full advantage of it. And I think Mo is a very versatile big that can play the five and the four. 
Bongo, we actually asked him to play four different positions this year. He's just a capable guy. He's, he's a really – he's just a great uh, a great player. That, that, that For us, he's a great role player. And he doesn't ask for shots. He earns his shots. He definitely gets out and defends. And, and he made a lot of plays that it had a very bad, high basketball IQ. So we like where he could go. You know, the addition of Jerome Robinson, I think, was very necessary for us as we continue to add athleticism. Shabazz Napier plugged a hole for us at point guard and then re- revealed himself to us as a, as a very key player for us moving forward. We like to have him. Then, you know, when you talk about a great additions for us, I, I can't say enough about Ish Smith. What a fantastic connector he is for our team and capable of starting, capable of coming off the bench and always, always a great teammate. So, you know, those kinds of guys, when you, when you look at them, they're big. And then watching Troy Brown and Thomas Bryant, our two TBs, as they developed this year, you saw some just brilliant flashes from them. Both of them kind of had to fight off a little injury bug here and there, but they're all part of our, our roster moving forward, certainly. And, you know, then you can kind of just start to imagine these guys growing together with Bradley and John. And then you look and see where our holes could be filled. Uh, you know, I said Davis is a huge part of what we want to do at that position. We, we probably want to get a little bit more depth at the big and Maybe get somebody at the rim that can that can block shots and, and detour people from coming in the in the paint. But I look at the makings that we have right now and where we are if this season ended today. We have the makings of a very promising team next year and in the future. We just have to stay patient. And, and part of that um, potential for next year, Tom Tommy, is is, is the evolution uh, of Bradley Beal as a. Absolutely. You know, you you were there in the beginning with him. Um, you've seen him, as we all, all three of us have seen him evolve and develop into, um, quite frankly, I mean, if there's a better two guard in the league, you know, it, it's it's a debate right now because that's how elite he's become. Yeah, it's a short conversation for sure. But those, you know, a player like Bradley, and we believe a player like John, they can take a bunch of other players and give them the confidence that they need to, to, to maybe level above where they're at. And, and you saw bits and pieces of, of a kid like Garrison Matthews on a two-way. We could come up and throw him into a game. And what he did in the Miami game at home was certainly uh, – you, you couldn't expect that from him every night, but it's indicative of the talent that he has. Well, Bradley Beal, Dalvis Bertans, they shoot with him all the time during practice. And that ability for that kid to get out there and play with two of the best players in the NBA, two of the best shooters, that only helps him. And those guys do a great job of bringing our young players along behind and, and growing them up. And, you know, like I keep saying, the best teams are where the players hold each other accountable. We'll, we'll always have great communication with our coaching staff, our front office, but I see the way that the players came together this year. Uh, it was fantastic, and I look forward to that moving forward. What was really fun is, is when we – start to add in the times that we spent with the go-go and John Wall scrimmaging with them, how much that meant to John's development and how much he meant for that team. You know, it just goes back to this basketball family with the community we've created with the Wizards, with the go-go, and you could throw the Mystics in that group as well, that how well we all work together. We mix and mingle. Their coaches are at our practices. Our coaches are at their practices. Their players play for us. Our, one of their coaches is with our G League team, you know, everybody can switch around and just feel like they're at home. And we're gaining wisdom everywhere we go with that. So it's been wonderful. And, uh, you know, we just try to be as good as our radio crew. That's what I ask everybody. <laughs> We've done something. Yeah, I try to keep the uh, the bar on the low. I, that's a question I want to get to, though. <laughs> the, the, uh, you obviously haven't been listening very much. You've been too busy uh, being a general manager. Yeah, the, uh, uh, no, we appreciate that. The uh, – but you just touched on it. I wanted you as a, I've witnessed this over the last couple of years, and and we've all been basketball fans for a lot of years. And and you would bring players up from the CBA or a ten day contract, and it'd be a, you know, a difficult situation. Somebody would be flying in from whatever city. Uh, that whatever spirit's being created uh, in Congress Heights, as you, as you have the capital city go, and as you just mentioned, the Mystics involved as well. That makes a difference, and that's that's probably why Garrison Matthews can have a game that scores 28 or Admiral Schofield on consecutive nights. I mean, that just doesn't happen by accident. It didn't used to happen in the NBA when somebody was flying in from Casper, Wyoming. Oh, absolutely. And they're, they're, they're so versatile that they can practice with us, practice with the go-go, start the morning with the Wizards, 
run over and play a game that night with the go-go. That, that just allows for so many more minutes. You mentioned Admiral. You know, Admiral played the fifth most minutes in the G League this year of any draft pick. And we, we wanted him to play at least 1,300 minutes. He did. And that will bode well for his development for next year. If, if this was a normal situation, as you say, Dave, if we didn't have the go-go here and we didn't assign Admiral, he probably would have played less than 200 minutes this year. So being able to go to 1,300-plus, uh, that, that's huge for us to get a chance to evaluate him. It's huge for him because he's playing in meaningful minutes and, and played in a lot of games. We're growing other players there as well. You mentioned Garrison. Jonathan Williams plugged a big hole for us when we were injured, and started games for the Wizards, and finished up with us as a two-way. You know, we think of Garrison and Jonathan as our, our people that we're looking to move forward with. And then can't say enough about like a kid like Jerry and Grant and what he was able to do for the go-go. Jalen Jones, you know, those are guys that we'll certainly consider for camp and for roster spots next year as well, just because of the work they put in. And we're able to continue have that continuity next year. We'll have a lot of the go-go players back, and that's going to be a huge part for, as we grow. Uh, I think we, we don't measure ourselves necessarily by how many guys get call-ups. Uh, but but that's certainly something we're, we're instantly in two years in the G League. We, we have a team that has as many call ups as any team in the in the NBA. So we're excited about that. I mean, I know, you know, running a business and running a pro team, it, it's one day at a time. But, you know, you're also in a, um, a scenario where the NBA is changing. You know, we've seen it change. Um, how often do you have to change the way you approach what you do because of the direction that the league is going. You know, I mean, it used to be, you know, a league dominated by big guys and the ball was punched in and there was no three point shot. And, and now it's, 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 it's changing. It's, it's faster. It's, it's more athletic. It's, it's more guard oriented and how, I, I guess, you know, with looking ahead, how, how do, how do you have to make decisions based on that now? Well, I think, and this is a real timely question, in light of all the scouting calls we've been on this week, we envision the Wizards having three playmakers at all times on the floor. Bradley's proven he's a, he's a high-usage guy. He can drop six, seven assists a night with no issues. And then obviously adding John Wall back in the mix is one of the top three point guards in the league when he's healthy. Uh, you add that to Troy Brown, perhaps, or whoever we're going to have at the wing, I think Troy is certainly somebody that, that's worthy. Uh, now you've got the floor where you can attack from any of the wing positions and certainly coming up the middle of the court. But then you add bigs that can run, bigs that can shoot. Glenn, I think the most glaring uh, need for every team on the, in the NBA is you've got to have all times, you've got to have shooters out on the floor. And if you're not a shooter, you better be an elite rebounder, an elite defender if you're going to be on the floor. Because scoring, scoring continues to go up. We obviously, we've done a great job on one end. we got to do a much better job at the other. But I think as we play consistent basketball, have consistent lineups, uh, you'll see that team kind of coagulate and be a much better defensive team. But in the NBA right now, the big questions are how many guys can play a position down and a position up? And if you can't, if you're not a versatile player, if you're not a very ability to guard multiple positions, man, you must be one of the very best players in the NBA for you to be considered to be on a roster. Because it's just the, the ability to have flexibility is, is critical in the NBA. And, and you know, I, I still believe it's a big man's game to some extent, but you saw an awful lot of teams finish games with unorthodox lineups. Yeah, look what Houston did. Absolutely, Houston, Boston playing Jason Tatum at the four often. Houston just said, you know, hey, let's go in the six, five and under. They went to the old USBL days, you know, <laughs> the six, six and under league. Yeah. So, Mike Every Tebow coached in that league. <laughs> What'd you say? I'm sorry, Dave. I, no, Mike Tebow coached in that six, five, and under league. Absolutely. You know, I, I think fans want to see a high-paced game. They want to see a lot of scoring. They want to see more than anything. They want to see players that play hard, play well together, and they're good people. And I think we're on that track. We're on a very positive tr direction that way. And I think you just touched on a good point that staying together – uh, helps you become a better defensive team because then there's that, that chemistry on, on defense. We'll, we'll close with this. NBA Commissioner Adam Silver, uh, I think, made a, a good comment the other day. It kind of the, the summarization of it was that we're just going to let in the NBA April be April and, and there won't be any decisions made uh, in April. Uh, what can you tell fans as you've interacted with other league executives? And I'm sure you're, you're getting 
uh, the message or, or questions from your players. Uh, what's the message to players and fans right now as we sit here in April? It's better to, to, to stay ready than get ready. I, I think right now I, I just continue to impress upon our players, stay in shape, don't try to get in shape. Whenever the, the door opens and we're allowed back in the facility, we're out, we're out back playing basketball like we love in front of the fans that we love. Whenever that day comes, we can't control that. I do think everybody needs to understand that this is about the world's health. This wasn't sent to take the NBA off the court and take something away from fans. This is something we're dealing with on a worldwide basis. Let's make sure the world is safe. It's a healthy environment. And then all the sports can go back to doing what they do. And I think we all realize how much sports mean to society, but nothing as much as, as good health. So we'll worry about whenever the days come and the, the, the courts open and we're ready to go, we'll be ready. But to fans, I tell you, just be ready. When the Wizards come back, it's going to be a great time. We're going to have a fun time. Jump on board with us now. The memory train is ready to roll. and I think everybody's going to love being on board that. Oh, this has been a lot of fun uh, this afternoon. General Manager Tommy Shepard on Full Court Press, our, our sincere thanks. Hey, I had no idea how much I'd miss you, too. I, I, I <laughs> but I miss you. Well, well, it's so good to see you, and, and we hope the listeners have enjoyed it. And don't forget all podcasts on Wizards Radio 24-7 on the Wizards app, SoundCloud, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, and Google Play. And remember, the Wizards Podcast Network can also be followed on Twitter, at WashWizardsPN. See, there's no excuse not to connect with us. Again, uh-huh. for none. For General Engine, Tommy Shepard, Lee Cotsar, I'm Dave Johnson. Thanks for listening to Full Court Press.